Actress and comedian Yvonne Origi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Glad you're able to join us again. So it's been a while since we uh, our first interview viewed you. It was a couple years back, right before Insecure started. So a lot has changed since since then for you uh, and me as well. But I want to start with with all these changes and seeing you everywhere, and some would say glowing up. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel good. <laughs> no, I feel good. I feel good. I like in general, um, I think I'm at a good place in my life where mm -hmm. I'm like I'm grown yeah. and I'm adulting and adulting is kinda hard. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, oof. Hmm. I, I, I used to work with the babies in the nursery and I'm like, Oh man, y'all don't know how good y'all have. Y'all just crying. No responsibilities. Y'all just crying. <laughs> Somebody's like, Oh, are you hungry? Are you teething? What do you ah! I wish somebody would ask me, like, are you, are you hungry? Are you okay? Are you teething? And, and then give me a bottle. <laughs> right. I mean, of milk. Just of milk, guys. Just straight yeah. similar. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. Or Moscato. I don't know. It's like, it goes down the same. <laughs> it's an extreme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's just, it's, it's like, but, you know, I think I'm at the point where it's like, you know what? You have to adult sometimes. Mm -hmm. And change is, change is not always sexy, but, like, yeah. it's good. Because you know that you're changing to become a better version of yourself. Yeah. And that's why I can say, oh, I'm good. So let's start with, let's just say, Insecure. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you know, or when did you start noticing the show was a hit? When I read the script the first time. Oh, even before the response. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. I watched Awkward Black Girl like everybody did. And yeah. it's just, it's so funny when people were like, you know, I hope it's good. It's like, bruh. It's already people, good. <laughs> people are so afraid because it's quote unquote different or new. But I'm like, it's not that different or that new. Mm -hmm. It's, it's. The, the lives that so many people live just portrayed um, back on screen or just in a way that other people haven't seen or been privy to. So it's like, this is so different and fresh. It's like, this is every day with black people. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and so when I, read, when I watched Aqua Black Girl, obviously I, was a, I became a fan. And then when I read the script and I was like, oh, I want, like, there are very few projects. And I think most actors that you will talk to will feel the same way they just know like when their agent sends them something or when they read something there's just like there's a resonating in your spirit like mm -hmm. i want this one the other ones you're like oh if i get it i'll do it yeah. you know or like oh you know it's, it's cool or you know sometimes it's like oh it's a check all right let's just do you know. <laughs> get in get out but, but there are some times where you're just like there's something special about this and i want to be a part of it and mm -hmm. that was insecure for me okay and what was the connection or how did Issa or the team end up connecting with you as far as filling a role for Molly? Was it like an audition or did they just add community directly? How does that work? I for sure auditioned five okay. times. Okay. Um, and Why so many? Because you have to, they have to make sure they have the right one. Oh. Um, so it's like when you get the first audition, it's kind of like a open, not open, but like the casting director kind of screens them mm -hmm. out. And then the second one you meet with the producers and the EPs mm -hmm. and the director and then you come back a third time, you know, they give you notes and you hopefully, you know, you, that you adjust, they yeah. see you a third time and then they're like, okay. And then the fourth audition is kind of like a chemistry read to see, you know, if you and Issa like vibe kind of well. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth one is the actual test with the network. Yeah. You got to, now you've passed all the EPs. Mm -hmm. Now you got to go to the like HBO brass and like sit in this room uh, or they sit in this kind of auditorium, it's dark. And then you got to go do your thing. And after that, you know, they have to be the ones to be like, this is who we like, who do you all mm -hmm. like? And hopefully that those two names match. Yeah. Um, and so, but how I, obviously I became familiar with Issa with Aqua Black Girl. Issa became familiar with me uh, when I po used to post like funny videos on YouTube. Okay. And then pre-Insecure, I created a trailer for a show called First, First Gen. Gen. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that actually kind of became my kind of like audition, my pre-audition tape, because yeah. it was like, hey, I know this girl doesn't have any acting credits, which I didn't, but like, look at this thing she did, like, created, wrote, directed, and starred in herself, like, perhaps, like, we should give her a shot, mm -hmm. and that, you know, sometimes you just, the steps of obedience that you take will lead you to your promised land. Definitely. I was going to ask you about that. So I've always known you as a comedian. When we first met back in Maryland, we were on the same program and you were hosting, but also sliding the comedy in here and there. So 
before going into Insecure, was there, was there literally just no acting experience at all? I mean, well, when you're a stand-up, like, it's, it's an act. You know, you're, yeah, you, true, you're true. adjusting mm-hmm. to the audience every night. Every performance is different. And, yeah. you, you know, some, you have to learn your script. <laughs> you right. have to learn your, like, what this jokes you're going to say. So it's kind of like it was my free acting class, mm-hmm. comedy was. Yeah. Because I was poor and I couldn't afford act, actual acting classes, mm-hmm. um, but it would it actually it got me comfortable. It got me being able to edit and take notes from like okay, well the audience really laughed on that joke, so let me let me do this this way so I can get a bigger laugh that way. Yeah. It's the same thing when you're on set and like the director's like okay, can you give it to me like this? I mean I like what you did here, but like can you just maybe do less of that here? And it's right. like okay, great. And so it was, it's kind of like. God uses everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but before Insecure, I mean, I'd done a couple commercials, but nothing on the level of I'm a, on a premium cable network right. like type show. And uh, so, yeah. I would just give you credit for having a little extra gifting or support there, too, because not every comedian, I think, can jump in with acting as smoothly as you did. Though. Oh, it, I mean, by sure the grace and yeah. the grace was there, but I, you know, I think God uses everything. You know, when I was a kid, I used to get bullied and because I didn't have any friends, I would talk to myself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And I think that was like, and I would talk to myself like, and act out what I would do if I had friends. Like, Hey girl, you want to go to the mall today? <laughs> and it was like, some could call that schizophrenia. I don't know what, but I called it <laughs> rehearsal for my purpose. God used I, it. Yeah. <laughs> God used it. I didn't even know I was rehearsing for my purpose, but God used it. And that's what he's, he's known for is using everything. Yeah. And so I think just those, mm-hmm. th- th- that skill of just like, okay, okay, well, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say this again. And then also I would just watch, I would, at that point I would watch a lot of TV or movies, and I would just be like, I don't believe this. I don't. Just, I don't believe this performance. And so, what do I have to do to be believable? Yeah, it's like I didn't know what it was that I did. like. I just knew that like something about the way they're talking seems very like, hey, how are you, man? And, and it just felt like mm, that's not. That doesn't sound real. Yeah. Because if I'm talking to you real, like I'm not talking to you like that. I'm talking to you like this. Mm-hmm. And so I like I think intellectually. My or subconsciously, my brain was just like, "Hey, whatever that thing is that you don't like, you don't do that when you get a chance to be an actor." Hmm. So I know you do so much beyond insecure. So, and if I'm overstepping, let me know. But is there a comedy special in the works? There is. Boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. How much can you say? That's it. That's it. <laughs> it's in the works. What about any other projects beyond that potential special and and the show Insecure? Anything well, else I that you landed can tell my us about? book deal. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'm currently writing a book. It's called Bamboozled by Jesus, mm. How God Tricked Me into the Life of My Dreams. Wow. Because mm-hmm. I, I, got, I got hoodwinked, y'all. I got bamboozled, run amok. <laughs> Let you know, astray. Let astray, <laughs> but in the best way possible. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that's what God does. He will lead you astray, and you will find your way. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And it's better than what He will lead you astray, and you will find your way. I Put wasn't even trying to rob. <laughs> wasn't even trying to get my Jesse Jackson on, but yes, he will lead you astray and so you will I find your way. Also, a mixtape is on the way as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and DMX, we're about to hit the studio. Hey, DMX, out. if you're listening, he's, I, he's coming out with a new album. Yeah. He get, fresh out of jail. No, that's what it's going <laughs> to be called. Ready to go. Fresh out of jail. I'm ready to go. I don't know. That's just how I feel. Yeah, I really, one day we're going to like actually like be in the studio together and y'all going to, it's just going to be fresh. It's going to be hotness. Hey. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> we go, he did he did Rudolph, so I'm gonna right. have I'm gonna have DMX remix like a, a gospel song, like I'm a Todd. I'm gonna say an old school Kirk song, maybe. Like or like I mean, Todd Driven is basically five seconds from DMX. Everybody got their hands. It's like okay, screaming, God. yes, just the everybody. Screaming. You're right about that. You know, <laughs> so maybe it could be you know. Oh, I would love to see like DMX do like Yolanda Adams. Mm. Never be give up. blessed. <laughs> Don't you stress. <laughs> no. You're like, yes. Wow. I'm just saying. I didn't expect to go on a DMX tangent, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> when you're with me, you should always expect to go. Be prepared to go, to go anywhere. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. I like, no, DMX has to find his way, his way into a conversation. Mm-hmm. So with the book, were you already planning on that? Or did you have some people say, hey, I think you should consider this? No, I was going to write a book. Anyway. Whether or not. Like, I, I'm, I'm never the person that's like, yeah. So my agents came to me and said, wouldn't this be good? I'm the one like, hey, guys, by the way, I'm writing a book. And my agents were the you one like. You let them know this is what I'm doing. And they, and they were, <laughs> I remember my, my agent like, so you know, like, before you mm-hmm. write the book, like, 
we can get you a deal. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, well, with or without a deal, I'm writing a book. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like it was one of those things where I'm just like, okay, I don't right. know how this works, but like, I know that every day that I'm not writing, mm-hmm. I'm being disobedient. Mm-hmm. So I got to get this out of me. And they were yeah. like, okay, okay, go, 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 go. Just come to us with a proposal. Like, it was just like, it was almost them like, okay, but th- there's an order and a protocol to this. And yeah. I was like, oh, I, I just got here. I don't know the order or the protocol, but I just know that, like, there's something in me that I need to put on paper. So how are we going to do this? Yeah. And, they, and and sometimes you need that push and pull. You're like, I'm going to do this regardless of this is what I this is what the book is. So it's not like I came right. to them like, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, what are you guys thinking? What's hot right now in the streets? It was like, hey, guys, so I really want to talk about, like, trusting God and the journey. And sometimes it's like not really sexy and you know, the struggle is real, but like mm-hmm. on the other side of it, like God is dope. And they were like, uh, okay. Yeah. Right. And then I, you know, wrote a proposal and you know, it's, it's, it's a book that's going to be easily digestible for anybody. If you've ever picked up the Bible, if you've never picked up the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Obviously, there's going to be themes in there that are, I mean, the book is called Bamboozled by Jesus, how God tricked me into the life of my dreams. I'm for sure going to reference some things from the Bible, but I'm going to reference some DMX lyrics. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to reference some things that happened to me in my life and just Mm -hmm. really use everything that we have at our arsenal to go through life, to put in the book, to exemplify like, yo, this is, this is real. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you need Ty Tribbett and sometimes you need Damn Cardi it. B. You know, <laughs> just to be like, yes, all right, I can make it. Yeah. I can make it. Okay. Um, so that's, yeah. Good. I want to throw some current topics out there at you to see what you think. Mm, <laughs> Are you boycotting Gucci? You know, I think more than just boycotting Gucci, I think there needs to be a real conversation in America about about racism Mm -hmm. and about like I don't say the the etiquette (laughs) the social etiquette of race yeah but you know when in doubt Google (laughs) you know it's like I feel like that's just that's just the easy especially in this day and age information is available we have so much and like it's like and and I I imagine I don't know what it's like to be in the fashion world but I imagine like in the scripted TV world, before a script can get out to mm-hmm. the world, it has to go through a network, a studio, a head writer, showrunner, a writer's room. Like it, there's a couple channels that it has to go through before you see it on a screen. Yeah. I imagine that if you're creating a garment, there's a there should be there should be enough checks and balances to be like, hey. Also, this happened with this other brand, very similarly, and they also got heat. At this point, it's just kind of like, hey, Google is too free to not know. Yeah. And so I think now it's like, so if you, is it that you don't want to know? Is it that you don't care? And you, you know and you don't care? Or it's like you really don't know? All of them are not good answers, but like, which one is it? But yeah. which one is it so that we can <laughs> we can figure this out? Because the reality is there needs to be something tangible when the, this does arise, when this, yes, when this arises again, that will bring lasting change. Because it's, it's almost kind of like now they test the brown folks. Yeah. Because if this other brand did it and this other brand did it and now Gucci is just like, well... Are you just kind of like, well, I mean, nothing happened in the past. Maybe you're just in the news for a little bit. You say an apology, but like, let's sell these shirts. Mm-hmm. You know, like what, like what is it? Like what is the nonchalance or the, the, what is it about the brown, like brown people that you're just like, no biggie. Right. Yeah. Thank you for a thoughtful answer. I appreciate that. So you have to get to the airport. I got to get to the and airport. And you have a lot going on. So last question, how can we be praying for you? Oh man, pray for me. <laughs> I pray for you. Has you a pray. Walker. That's it. Sing um, all the parts. <laughs> <laughs> I need you. You are important. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. How can you rip, man? Pray, pray that man. Like as I sit down to write this book, like everything God yes. wants me to say to his people, I'm able to articulate that so clearly, and and that the book leads people to trust God on the level that pushes them beyond their comfort zone um that 
you know, it reaches people that, you know, some churches are not able to. Mm -hmm. um, and it reaches people that are not in church. Uh, but it brings not further religion, but a relationship with God. That's like my goal. Um, pray for, you know, just be continue to be a light. Like, wherever I go, like, just continue to just be happy. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I think when I'm happy, I think I can make other people happy. Right. Um, and, you know, feeling whole and complete. And also pray for my husband, wherever you are, sir. Hi, how are you? I am uh, available to be found uh, by you. And uh, you can email me at, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Thank you for that confirmation. Uh, well, this is Malik Blade, and that was Guess Who.